Hi, this is Almiri Westhuizen with Cape Town Emergency Medicine, here today to talk about the insertion of intraosseous access in a child. Intraosseous access is an emergency procedure to establish vascular access where conventional techniques have failed. Before we start demonstrating the procedure, some equipment. Although there are many excellent commercial devices available for obtaining osseous access, these may not be available in the unit where you work. We will show you a technique today using an 18 gauge pediatric spinal needle with stylet which should be available in most units. You will also need a selection of syringes, 10 ml syringes should be fine, and any drugs you require pre-drawn to the dose which is weight appropriate. Although there is no one excellent way to secure interosseous access, we will show you one technique that uses an umbilical clamp, some tape and gauze. The first step when inserting an interosseous line in a child is to position the child correctly. The child should be on their back with a blanket roll behind the knee to keep the leg gently flexed. The second step would be to identify the correct area of insertion. Grab the knee firmly and palpate for the proximal end of the tibia. The area that the interosseous axis should be gained is about one finger breadth distal to that on the anterior medial flat surface of the tibia. Please take care not to insert the needle too close to the knee as damage to the growth plate may ensure. Once the child is correctly positioned and the area of insertion has been identified, proceed with your procedure. Although this is an emergency and sterility is often not possible, attempt to be as clean as possible and an alcohol swab clean of the leg is the absolute minimum. To use the 18 gauge interosseous needle, take off the sheath and we recommend holding it at the base of the index finger and then grabbing the needle between the index finger and thumb, giving you a firm but controlled grip. Once you have grasped the knee and identified the area for insertion, insert the needle through the skin perpendicular to the skin and bone. Once you have purchased on the cortex, in a firm but controlled manner and in a twisting motion, insert the needle through the cortex, you will feel a give as it goes through. The tip of the needle should now be in the marrow space. Firmly grasp the needle and secure it to the skin and remove the stylet. One would often have spontaneous flush of blood into the needle at this time. If not, attach a needle to the end and just aspirate and see if you can see any blood coming back. Another way to confirm position is to take a pre-filled saline syringe and attach it to the back of the needle. Infuse the fluid into the marrow space. Please note that there should be more resistance felt than with standard vascular access, but that excessive power should not be necessary. Once you have confirmed position, make sure with visual inspection that there is no extravasation of fluid and palpate the calves on both ends to make sure that there is no extravasation into the posterior compartment. After the syringe has been removed, attach a three-way system and an extension set to the needle. At this point in time, you would connect your intravenous fluid and giving set to the three-way tap system and extension set. Please note that an assistant would now take over securing the needle. We recommend that you maintain manual control of the needle until such time as all the initial essential and life-saving drugs and fluids has been given as securing the needle to the leg itself may actually cause dislodgement. Once an assistant has taken over here, attach your giving set. It's very important to note that gravity alone is not enough to infuse fluid into the patient and you would have to use a three-way tap bolus technique to do that. In order to do this, make sure that the tap is open to the syringe port and open to the intravenous fluid bag. Attach the needle to the port and aspirate the required amount of fluid from the bag. Now make sure that the system is open from the syringe to the patient and deliver the fluid as needed. This process can be repeated over and over, and the side port can also be used to deliver medicines. Once all initial life-saving medications has been delivered, securing the intraosseous needle is an option. 
in order to demonstrate one technique for doing so, I will now remove the giving set from the back of the needle. But please note that when you're actually doing the procedure, you would not disconnect and have an extra assistant to help you. All techniques for securing the needle to the patient's leg carry the risk of dislodging the needle or increasing vascular compartment pressures. One technique that has been described starts off with a roll of gauze that is placed against the skin at the base of the needle to protect the skin from any pressure. One could then take an umbilical clamp, press it down and click in place. The final step would then be to use some tape to secure it to the patient. Do not use a lot of circumferential tape to secure the needle to the patient. But it obscures the leg for visual inspection and the regular palpation of the calf compartment to prevent extravasation. And a constrictive circumferential bandage would increase vascular compartment pressures in the case of extravasation, increasing the risk of compartment syndrome. And that's it. Correct insertion of an intraosseous line in a child.